You know, uh, last year, making the decision to kind of bet on yourself a little bit, bet on this team, I know it's been a month out now, but just what, how gratifying was that moment when, when you signed the deal and how excited are you about this, this next step in Green Bay? Oh, it's definitely a dream come true. You know, I feel like I've been grinding for a long time and just, you know, finally find an organization that, you know, saw my skill set and realized what I can bring to the team for years to come. It just felt good to kind of get a little bit of security, you know, more than anything. So after first team all pro, like what do you do for an encore now? How do you, how do you look at 2022? I mean, a lot of people thought it was fluke, but you know how that goes. So we just trying to continue to get better every day and keep pressing forward and, you know, try to repeat. Devondre, what was the what was the timeline for this coming together? And was there ever a time where you thought it might not happen? There was that day, I don't know if you were at Lodge Kohler or whatever, but we all saw your mm -hmm. Instagram post with the googly eyes. What Can you kind of take us through those days and how it, it went from wherever you were to <coughs> getting done? Um, I mean, we were in constant communication the whole time but you know how this business works and we just kind of took it day by day um th that day i was here i think i was here checking on my house i kind of just did that to be funny actually <laughs> but um yeah it was it wasn't really nothing going on around that time we were just kind of you know mutual talks kind of trying to figure out where the where to go from there but you know, I'm here now, and it, it worked out for the best. So I'm I'm happy to be here and happy to continue to to build with the guys. You guys never send out social media stuff just to get a reaction, do you? No. That, I do sometimes. <laughs> you know, I know people bite on it, so sometimes I like to play that game. You know, we all had to drop everything we were doing to figure out if this was real or not. So yeah. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know when you came into training camp late, you had to catch up and, and learn the defense and finally find your place in it. What do you think the second year around means for you in terms of how the defense will fit you and you will fit the defense? I think the biggest thing is just, you know, having a full off season with the guys. Um, like you said, I came in late and I had like a month to kind of figure everything out and just kind of hit the ground running. You know, I'm a smart person, so it wasn't really too hard. But, you know, the, like I say, the biggest thing was just knowing my teammates' strengths and weaknesses since I, I didn't really have a lot of time with them. So most of the first part of the early season was getting used to playing behind my D-line or like communicating with my safeties and stuff like that. So just being able to have more time with them and, you know, with all the, the protocols and stuff being lifted, now I can actually hang out with them outside of the building. So it just, things will be a lot more smoother now this time around. How do you celebrate the contract? Um, I haven't really ce celebrated, you know. I don't, really, I don't really try to celebrate because the work, the work isn't done. You know, it's, it's a blessing, but there's still more to be done. Does that drive you that that people, I don't know who these people are, but some people look at last year as a fluke. Does that drive you? Yeah, this it always season? drives me. You know, it's it's kind of the story of my career. People have, you know, these thoughts or whatever it may be. None of it be true, but I, that's just the business. So I deal with it as it comes. Devondre, you mentioned being able to hang out with the guys now. Mm -hmm. Whatever decisions you made last year, you made were best for you, yeah. but we haven't even gotten to be in the same room with you until now. What was that like for you last year to, to be part of the team and be able to do certain things, but not be able to hang out with the guys outside of the team and stuff like that? And is it a lot different now this time around? To be honest, I'm not really going to talk about that. That's that. It's over with. You know, everybody has their own thoughts and decisions on it, but I don't really want to talk about that. Last year, you know, of that, of not being able to be around guys and everything like that, was there a moment where you know you you felt like, okay, this is this is my new home. I'm, I'm a part of this team. I'm foundationally here. And did that kind of play into your decision to to, to resign? Um, that was day one. You know, like like from the day I walked in, everybody from you know Russ and Mark and Brian Gudikis, like the people up top to players on the team to even like GAs and scouts. Everybody was just so happy that I was here. So, 
you know, when you got people from all the way to the top down to people who are just starting showing how much they appreciate you being here, it goes a long way. And, you know, I've always felt like I've done all the right things for the wrong people. So to actually find, find people who show their appreciation for you, I mean, you, you want to run through a wall for them. So, you know, like I said, the, the fact that the Packers showed me a commitment, you know, it's mutual. It goes both ways. So, Devon, all right, so they were excited to have you right away. Mm -hmm. But I remember distinctly LaFleur talking to us maybe a week in the training camp, and yep. he was just gushing about you. Yeah, a when lot they, of people don't know. I, I've known Matt since my rookie year. Right. You know, like he was on uh, the, the staff when I was in Atlanta, and I used to talk to him every day. So, you know, coming here was a, a pretty easy decision. You know, the, the process took a couple weeks. Like, we were talking for two or three weeks before I finally signed. But, you know, I was just trying to put myself in the best situation possible, you know, because a lot of people don't know the type of player I am, and that's okay. It's a lot of us in the league, but, you know, just the whole general idea of, like, I've, I've like people consider me an average player. I've always felt like I've been a great player, but opportunity is everything, you know, like, I had one job responsibility here that allowed me to excel week in and week out rather than going into a game plan where you're playing three or four different positions. And I mean, I, I was able to do it well, but you know, it, it eventually takes a toll on you. So I just wanted to put myself in the best position to showcase my talents on a weekly basis. Did you know, Dre, that you were going to get that specific role yeah I told him for you. I was like the only way I will come is if you let me do this and only this I don't, I don't want to play Sam Mike and Will and like yes I can guard running backs and tight ends and wide receivers but I don't want to do it all day like I did that for four years five years you know like the tape is there but that's not what I want to do I want to be a Mike and I want to be just the Mike so yeah they were cool there right away and where you went. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I know Matt. Matt knows my skill set, so it was an easy decision. Like, that's what you want to do. I know you can do it, so I'll let you. So, so they say that, but as you probably know from your experience of, what did you say, doing the right things for the wrong people? Yeah. That teams don't always follow through on their words. Yeah, I mean, but it goes both ways. If you don't hold your word, I won't hold mine, right. you know, so. We, we all men, you know, if we agree on something, that's what we agree on. You know, like, if I tell you, like, I'm, I know I can do this and just let me do it, you got to trust me until shown otherwise, you know. So they showed me a trust factor, and, you know, that's the, the results we got are what we got. So, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory of that first week of camp was you were actually running with the twos for the first couple yep. of days, right? Mm -hmm. So when did you know, all right, this is – this is what I expected it to be, and I'm going to flourish here. Was it, was um, it after about a week? Or? Yeah, it, took, it definitely took a week or two, you know, because, like, with anything, there's, there's an adjustment period. And the simple fact of it was, like, I didn't really have an opportunity to learn the defense with the team. Like, I'm a, a walk-through, practice rep kind of person. Like, yeah, you can look at it on the board, but as I know, once the ball snaps, everything changes, you know, so I need to be able to see how things are on the go. So there was that, that little adjustment period, but that's what you have training camp for. That's what we have practices in preseason. So it was an adjustment, but picked it up pretty quickly, made mistakes here and there, even throughout the season, you know, it happens. But we got better and we just want to continue to get better. You spent most of your career doing one thing, and, and mm -hmm. your words, the, the, the wrong thing. What, what I wouldn't say the wrong thing. Like, don't, don't take me wrong when I say that. Like, when I say it, I mean it from a standpoint of, like, I was playing so many different positions to the point where people was like, well, we don't know what he's good at because he's doing this, this, and this. And, yeah, he's good at it, but we haven't seen him do one thing on a consistent basis. And that's what I was hearing. So I wanted to kind of debt that rumor, like, you know, he's just the average player. No, I know I'm great, and I've always felt like that. But I, like I say, opportunity is everything, and I never had the opportunity to consistently showcase it. So now that I'm here and able to do it, you know, everybody's seeing it on a national stage. 
What gave you that belief that if you just stuck to one thing, you would be great? Well, especially when you didn't really have that opportunity maybe before. My peers. Every week, I have guys telling me, you're a top five, top player, 10 player at your position. What is it? Like, why haven't, you know, you getting these opportunities? And I, you know, for the longest, I wanted the same thing. Like, what is it? What am I doing wrong? Like, I know I'm just as good as all these other guys, but why is it that I don't get the same, the same shine, you know? But like I say, everything, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And this was the perfect opportunity because, you know, and I'm gonna address this too, because I've been seeing a lot of it happening. There's this big rumor that I had no offers last year before I signed with Green Bay. That is 100% false. I had several offers that I turned down because they just weren't the right situations. And, you know, they wanted me to play a position that I didn't want to play. And so when Green Bay came along, I always was familiar with the team. You know, I've been watching them because, like I say, I knew Matt. So when he got the head coaching job, I always been keeping up with them. And I knew Joe Barry from L.A. because he was out there with the uh, a guy who actually recruited me in high school, Brandon Staley, who's the head coach for the Chargers now. So I was kind of familiar with the system, and I knew, like, this is not a, a system that can give me an opportunity to excel. So I was kind of familiar with the situation, and I knew what I was getting myself into. Like, only thing I needed to do was learn the defense, and the rest was on me. Trey, I think you clarified that to us during the playoffs, too, mm -hmm. the offer thing. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, a bunch of us in here are dads. Um, you have a tweet after the news broke about how your kids are, are set now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all do things for our kids, but yep. it seemed like that was a pretty huge motivator for Yeah, you. for sure. You know, like, just the reality of it is a lot of us come from middle class or low class households. So, you know, when you finally reach that ultimate goal of being able to set your kids up for life, you know, so my kids don't have to grow up and do some of the stuff I had to do to, to make it by, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, and it's just, you know, I look at them every day and I'm like, uh, it's all about y'all. This is what I do it for. So just knowing that they set for life, that's no matter what, whatever else happens to me for the rest of my life, I, I can live with it knowing that, I did everything I could to put them in the best position possible. Trey, they, they were able to bring back Rasul too. We're going to talk to Preston. Yep. He got his extension. Just what's your level of excitement of this defense with the number of you know players you have coming back in this game? I'm extremely excited, man. We're we're getting a lot of our key pieces back, and like you, we are kind of reiterated on earlier, just going into year two with a lot of us coming back and being able to take that next step from a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint. It's just, it's huge. And the more that we can all get on the same page, the better we can be. Because, I mean, we did some great things last year. We had some highs and some lows. But the bottom line is the last time we took the field as a defense, we gave up six points. So that's just the standard that, that we have from here on out. And that's what's expected.